Hello, everyone. Um, this video is going to be uh, about the pen tool quiz that we're going to that you're going to be taking, and then um, we're going to be moving on to some other uh, options or things that you can do in Illustrator. Um, so the one that we're going to that you're going to be working on this week has to do with the gradients, creating gradients and the gradient mesh. Um, so you're going to have the Illustrator quiz pen tool quiz, and then the Illustrator gradient tool worksheet um, that you're gonna be working on. So we've finished up the pen tool section um, with the advanced pen tool assignments that you were working on this week. And then we're moving to the pen tool quiz, which will uh, just be a refresher or a review of what you've been working with the pen tool. Um, and then the gradient mesh is something or the gradient tool and the gradient mesh is just another way to add color to your um, drawings or your artwork when you're creating something in Illustrator. So I'm gonna start with the pen tool, uh, go over that briefly and then work through the Illustrator um, gradient tool worksheet. And then, um, then in the next two weeks or so, we're gonna be working on some other stuff in Illustrator that um, we're going to do a logo and then um, some other things working with text and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the pen tool quiz uh, explanation. So you're going to download the pen tool quiz illustrator file. You're going to open it up in Illustrator and trace the items using the pen tool, um, like you were doing with the other pen tool assignments and the um, advanced pen tool where you had like the coloring book pages. Um, follow the instructions about which color to fill the shapes with. Uh, there is no time limit on this quiz. You can take as long as you need to um, to complete it. Then once you're done with it, you're gonna save uh, the file with your first and last name and then pen tool quiz. And then you're gonna upload it to this um, assignment page. Okay, and then here is a, um, a preview of what the pen tool quiz looks like. So you're going to be tracing these shapes, and then it tells you there uh, exactly what color you need to fill in each of those um, shapes with. And then it's got the little hints here, pen tool behaviors, and then um, to make sure that you set your um, have no fill when you're drawing at first and then just have a stroke and then that, then you can go back and fill it with color that way you can still see what you're tracing as you're working okay so i'm going to go ahead and go over to illustrator here and again here's the pen tool quiz um, i'm going to go to my layers panel right here and you can see that this is set up with two layers one is the pen tool quiz itself, um, the template, and then the layer that you're going to uh, be drawing on that layer. Um, the, also, the other thing that I wanna mention is my screen may look a little bit different than yours. Um, I'm using the Essentials Classic uh, layout um, that has all the most of the tools and stuff that you would be using or panels, I should say over here that you'd be using. Um, if you're using essentials uh, as your layout or your workspace, that's fine. Um, you may have to go under the window menu to find some of the things that um, I have over here, but everything that I have here is also under this under the window menu. So um, if I, reference something over here on the right hand side that you may not have, depending on your workspace that you have, um, you'll find it under the window menu. And I will mention that as well, which one I'm going to be using. Okay. So again, I'm going to make sure that I just have a stroke uh, active, no fill. So I'm going to click on the little red line here to turn off my fill before I start drawing. And then I'm going to select the pen tool and I'm just gonna come over here on the different shapes and start tracing them. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit. 
And I'm not going to go through and trace all of these. I'm just going to do the first three and then you can continue working on those. So again, it's just, just a refresher um, from what we've been doing for the last couple of weeks, last two weeks uh, in Illustrator. Okay, so with the straight lines, you're just clicking and adding anchor points on the shapes. And then always make sure you come back to that first anchor point that you put down so you can make a complete shape. Okay, and same thing with the tree. These are straight lines. So I'm just clicking with my mouse, putting down anchor points on each of those areas. And then I'm coming back to that first anchor point and then closing it. And then the last one that I'm going to do here is the ornament. Because this has curved lines, so this is the refresher of curved lines. So you kind of decide where you want to start. Um, and then decide if you're going to start with a curved line, you know, to begin with, or you're going to just add an anchor point and then come down and click and drag to make your direction handle. So I'm going to go ahead and start here, come to about middle there, click and drag to make my line. And I'm paying attention to where that rubber band is going. So it lines up with that dotted line and kind of just follow what you did on the, the one side. And you can see that that, anchor, that handle is a little too high. So I'm going to hold down my option key pull that handle down just a little bit. And now when I come to that spot there, it lines up a little bit better. Okay, and then just continue around here, adding your anchor points, whether it's curved line or straight line. And come back to that original anchor point. Okay, so I'm going to go back in and fill these three with color. So this first one that says the star, turn, change it to yellow. So I'm going to come over here to my appearance, click on the red line where it says fill, and I'm going to select yellow. Now you can use the swatches or you can come here to the color panel and, you know, create whatever shade of yellow you want, okay? It doesn't have to be 100% yellow. It could have some orange or whatever in it, just as long as it's, um, you know, yellow, some sort of yellow. Same thing with the tree. I'm gonna take my selection tool here, click on the, on the line that I drew, come over here to my fill. And again, you can either use the swatches that are here, the default swatches, or you can come to the color mixer and pick, you know, different shade of green if you want. Okay. And then the ornament is red. So I'm clicking on that, selecting it, coming over here to the fill. And I'm going to go ahead and select the red that's in the, the swatches. Okay. So then you're gonna continue on with the other three. Um, so you should complete all six on this page, but I just wanted to do the first three. Um, and so take your time on this. You have as much time as you need for this. Um, if you have to go back and redo it a couple of times, that's fine. Um, but I just want you to you know, be well-versed with the pen tool. Um, and if you have to go back and do some of the other pen tool assignments for more practice before you do that, that's, that's fine as well. Um, I'm not expecting the lines to line up exactly. As you can see, when I was drawing it, nothing lined up exactly. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and complete these uh, six shapes here. And then you're going to save this with your... Um, first name or last name and then first name.
And then you will upload this to the quiz um, assignment page. So if I go back over here, so here you're going to upload it, start assignment, come down here to the bottom, click upload your file, and then choose your file. And then wherever you're saving your files on your computer, um, find that file, click open, and then submit assignment. And I'm not going to submit the assignment because um, you can see I'm in the student view here. So I'm not going to submit it, but those are the steps for that. Okay. And if you have any questions about this assignment, uh, just let me know. Um, I'll help you or, you know, give you some pointers. Um, and then you can go also, like I said, go back and uh, review the um, videos from, from the pen tool assignments that we did. Okay. Um, so then I'm going to go back to the modules. I'm going to go ahead and leave this because I'm not going to submit submit that. Okay. Uh, the next one or the next part of Illustrator that we're going to be working on is gradients and gradient mesh. So this talks a little bit about what gradients are. Um, they're graduated blend of two or more colors or tints of the same color. You can use gradients to create color blends, add volume to vector objects, and add light and shadow effect to your artwork. So if you're, um, say you're drawing a, a ball or something, or a, a glass, or something that had a reflection, you can use your, um, use gradients to create that, you know, more three-dimensional look to your, to your um, artwork. Um, you can create, apply, and modify a gradient using the gradient panel, the gradient tool, or the control panel. So there's a couple different ways or uh, areas to access the gradient panel. And then there's uh, three different types of gradients. Linear, so that's uh, linear as in a line from one point to another in a straight line. Radial is more of a circular pattern, you know, either from the center center point or to the edge. And then freeform um, gradient type, you can create uh, whatever color, how many ever steps of color you want uh, within a shape, random sequence, such that the blending appears smooth and natural. Um, it can apply, be applied in two modes. So using uh, points, use this mode to shade the area around a color stop or lines use this mode to shade around a line. Um, a color stop is a point on the gradient annotator, or I call it a gradient ramp. And I'll show you that when I get to the gradient panel um, that controls the color of the gradient. You can change the color of the color stops to set a gradient. Um, and then I've also provided a link to the Adobe website here um, where you can, uh, it talks a little bit more about gradients. Um, talks about the gradient panel, the tool and the panel. And I apologize, my images aren't loading very fast here. Um, but it's got more information about the uh, gradients, um, how to create them, how to find them. Um, how to apply them. Here's a little, um, uh, what do you call it? Animation of creating a gradient, how to, where did, you know, the different places to find it. Um, how to create and apply a linear gradient, radial gradient, freeform gradient. Um, and then how to, this is for the freeform gradient and points mode where you can change individuals, parts of the gradient. Um, and then how to modify gradients, adding color stops, how to modify the color on those color stops. And I'll show you all of this as I'm working on that gradient um, worksheet. Okay, so this is the link to the Adobe site that talks a little bit about more about gradients. Um, there's a video here for you to 
review um, at your own time. And then also on this page, it talks about gradient mesh. <coughs> Excuse me. A gradient mesh is a multicolored object which colors can flow in different directions and transition smoothly from one point to another. So you can draw like an apple in Illustrator and using the gradient mesh, you can, um, you know, how an apple, when you look at it, depending the color, you can add points of color in different places on the gradient mesh that will make it look more three-dimensional. Um, so it talks a little bit more about that. Uh, again, here's the Illustrator page that talks about gradient mesh. So here you can see this looks like a, a raindrop or a drop of water, and it's looking more three-dimensional because of the placement of the colors. Um, and this talks about how to create uh, gradient meshes, how to edit them. So it works with the, the direct selection tool. You can move the, crush, the, the mesh points around on the, on, the, on the shape that you've drawn. Um, you can also set part of your gradient mesh area to transparency or reduce the value or to reduce the intensity of, of the color. And um, I'll show you that when I, when we get to the, when I get to the, um, the worksheet, the gradient worksheet. Okay, and then there's also two videos here um, that talk about a little bit more about gradient mesh that you can watch. And then if I click next, um, here is the gradient tool worksheet. And once, I, once I'm done recording this video, um, it will get put here on the, uh, the link will get put here, okay? Um, I've included a link to the uh, Adobe site, this is here. Um, the tutorial that they have on their website for creating color gradients. So if you want to work a little bit more with gradients, you can download the um, practice files and then work along with the, um, the steps that are here in this tutorial. Okay. So it's just a little bit more practice with um, the gradient, okay? Um, and then this is the gradient tool worksheet that we're gonna be working on. Um, these are the samples that I did with the instructions here. And I'm gonna walk through all four of these with you. Um, you can create your, uh, there's two of them, um, Two of them where you have to do specific colors um, and then the other ones you can do whatever colors you want. Okay, so this is a gradient mesh down here. And then these three here are um, just the gradient tool or the gradient panel, I should say. Okay, so I've already downloaded this uh, worksheet but you're gonna download that worksheet. And then I'm gonna go over to Illustrator Okay, so here is the gradient uh, tool worksheet. Um, and again, I had mentioned earlier the setup that I have or the workspace setup that I have. My gradient tool is already, or gradient panel is already visible over here on the um, right hand side. But if you're using a different workspace than I'm using, one of these other ones here, um, you can access the gradient panel underneath the window menu. Okay, so that's the same thing that's right here. It's just already nested in these in the panels here. Uh, if you don't see it there, then you can just, like I said, go under the window menu and go to gradient and it'll it'll pop up. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And again, this file is set up uh, where layer one is the, the instructions. And then the work here is where you're gonna be putting the, the different gradients that you're working on, okay? All right, All right. so um, the first one we're gonna do is a gradient sunset. So I'm gonna create a square shape. So I'm gonna take my rectangle tool and I'm gonna create a rectangle. 
And then I'm going to come over here to my gradient panel. And you'll see the preview of the gradient here, the types of gradients. So we have a linear gradient, radial gradient, and freeform gradient. The, for this particular worksheet, we're going to be just using these first two. The free form um, is not, we're not using that one. So we're going to use these first two. Okay, so this one calls for a linear gradient. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it's going to fill it with default um, black and white gradient. So it's, it's going from white to black. So you can see that here in the shape that I drew. You have white over here on the left-hand side and black over on the right-hand side. And the color ramp or the gradient slider down here shows you the same thing. So you have white over here and black over here. So these are what are called stops, color stops. You can have as many color stops along that gradient slider or gradient ramp as you want, um, just depending on how detailed you want your, um, your gradient to be. Okay, so this particular one just has two stops. Um, so we're going to add, we're going to create three colors on this particular one. Okay, so I've selected the gradient, the linear gradient. I'm going to set the gradient at 90 degrees. So right here, there's a pop down menu. It has 0, 30, 45, 60, 90, and so forth. So we're going to do 90. So you can see it changed the direction of the gradient. So you now have black on the top and white on the bottom. So you're gonna select three colors, red, orange, and yellow. So you're gonna start by clicking on the first little stop here, the white stop. So if you click on that, it's gonna tell you a couple, a couple things by you just clicking on it. The opacity is set to 100 and the location is at zero. Okay, so you have zero to 100 over here on the, on the uh, right-hand side. So clicking on that gives you some information here. If you double click on these little circles, it brings up your um, swatches and your color panel. So at this point, you can select a color from the swatches, the default swatches, or you can switch over to the color panel or the color pan, uh, palette and create your own color. Because this is a black and white gradient, the color right now is just black. If you want to change this to, um, if you wanna select a specific color, then you're gonna change this to CMYK, the little pop down there, okay? So then that gives you the spectrum, the color spectrum, the CMYK color spectrum, and it also gives you the sliders that you can you know, tune in exactly what color you wanna use. So for this particular one, we're using red, orange, and yellow. So again, you can use your swatches and click on red if you want. And then if you want to, you can come over here and adjust it if you're not you know, happy with that red. Okay, if you want something more like that, you can. Um, and then I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna double click on this one so I can bring up yellow. I'm going to select the yellow from the swatches, but you can use it from the color. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this yellow. Okay, and you can see it's going from red to yellow. And then in the middle, about here in the middle, we're going to add another stop. So you can see I have that little plus sign underneath the arrow. That's letting me know that I'm going to add a color stop right there where I click. Okay, so now I have three little circles. Okay, so now if I double click on that, okay, and then the other thing you can, you'll notice here too, it's telling me the location of that 
particular color stop or color on that ramp. So right now it's at 50%. If you want it to be exactly at 50%, there's the pop down menu there and you can change it to 50%. Um, if you want it at you know, 80%, then it's gonna move it to that direction. If you want it at 10%, it's gonna move it to the left. So that's what this location percentage is here. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that. And again, it's gonna bring up my swatches. I can switch over to the color picker and create more, a different orange. So I can go a little bit more with magenta or I can go a little bit less. So you can see it's changing the colors up here at the, on the gradient on that shape. Okay. But you want it to be more of a graduated color. So it's, you know, not too much red, too much orange, too much yellow. But again, how whatever whatever shades of red, yellow, and orange you want to put on there, that's fine. Okay. But you have this ability here to uh, manipulate the colors exactly how you want it to look. Okay. So that's for the gradient, the sunset one. Now, because I've already created this gradient, when I go and draw the next shape, because the next shape is it wants a circle, it's going to pick up this gradient that I created here. So I'm going to go ahead and go back over to my ellipse tool. And a cat eye, you know, a cat eye, uh, uh, the shape of a cat eye is more of a oval. Okay. Or you can do it as a perfect circle if you want, whatever, whatever shape you want it to be. Okay. Doesn't have to be exactly a circle. So you can see it picked up that gradient that I just drew or created over here in my gradient panel. Um, I'm going to go get my selection tool and just move it up just a little bit so it's it's inside that box. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, take off the color on this one, or you know, put it back to the default color of a white fill and a black stroke. So pressing D on the keyboard will do that. Okay. Now, if I go to my gradient panel, if I click on this, it's still going to apply that same gradient. I know that doesn't, that's kind of, you know, I did the steps backwards, but by um, changing it to a blank can or blank or a, uh, default colors here, yes, you're still gonna end up applying that gradient to it, but I wanted you to see how you can, you know, change it, create, you know, do no fill, no color on there, no gradient on there. But yes, it's still going to apply the gradient once you have, um, once you click on the gradient here, okay? So it's still gonna apply it. So we're gonna go through the same steps. We're gonna change this to a radial gradient, okay? So you can see there's yellow on the outside and then it goes into, red on the middle, okay? So this time we're gonna select two colors, the outside color as green and the inside color as yellow. And then it's gonna be 0% opacity on that, um, on the yellow, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and if you wanna, I didn't mention this before on the other one, um, if you want to get rid of one of the stops down here at the bottom, you can just drag it off and then you're just with the two colors or how many other other colors you had. So if you if you don't want that many stops, color stops on your gradient, just drag that slider or that that circle down and it will it will go away. That color will go away. Okay, so the outside color needs to be green. 
So this is the outside color here. So you can see here is the outside color is yellow. So I'm going to double click on that. And I'm going to create, you know, doesn't have to be, again, you can use your swatches here. If you want to pick one of these greens. Or if you want to do a specific green, kind of tune it in exactly how you want it, then you can just drag those sliders and get the green that you want. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here on the red one here, double click on that. That's going to be yellow. So uh, yellow is 100% yellow on the sliders here. Or you can select, you know, one of the yellows that are here, whichever you, one you want to do. Okay, so I have my, my yellow. I'm going to do a little bit of maybe a little bit of magenta in there, just a little bit. Okay. So it could be 100% yellow. It could be, you know, a shade of yellow, however you want to do that. Then I'm going to change the opacity of this stop. So you can do it in two different places. You can do it right here. So the opacity, I'm going to put it down to zero. And you can see right here on the slider, the gradient slider, you now have a little bit of a checkerboard uh, background here. And that's letting you know that it's transparent at that point. Uh, okay. Um, you can also see right here, you have the opacity as well. So you can change the opacity there. Okay, like this, oops, something happened here. <laughs> okay. All right, so let me do this again because I don't have yellow there. Somehow I, I clicked on there twice and got two stops. So I'm gonna double click on this again. And then I'm going to change this, get rid of the magenta. And then let me turn that down just a little bit. And then I want to change my opacity right here to 100%. Okay, what happened here? <laughs> All right, let's go back and do this. Let's grab yellow here just to make sure. Okay, so I have yellow from my swatches. And then I'm just gonna adjust this a little bit here and then change this to zero. Okay. Okay, so that's how it should look. Um, you should have in your gradient slider here, it should have that little checkerboard and then this should look yellow here. Not sure what happened with that red uh, at first, okay? So that's how you change the opacity of your color on the stop right here, or the transparency of it. Okay. So then the next step with this is to create an ellipse. Uh, using the ellipse tool, create a black football shape. So you know how a, a cat's eye has the black section in the middle. So I'm going to go get my ellipse tool. I'm going to click and drag and make an ellipse. And again, it's it's picking up that gradient that I, we just created. So I'm going to come over here to the fill, and I'm going to click on black. So it fills it with black. And then we're going to send it to the back. OK, so it's going to go behind this shape. So I'm going to go to the object menu. Oops, make sure it's selected. <laughs> object menu, arrange, and then send to back, the very last one. So now it looks like, and if I use my arrow keys to move that up, it looks like a cat's eye. I click over here to deselect that. Okay. Uh, number three is to, to create a gradient of stripes. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Okay. 
and the because the last thing I drew was the shape here and I filled it with um, black. That's why this shape is now filled with black. So then I'm going to go to my gradient. And the other thing I didn't mention is you have this uh, pop down menu here that has some um, default gradients. You can see there's one here that's already um, stripes. If I click on that, you can see here how that what this is kind of what we're going for the stripes here. Okay, but I'm going to create my own stripes. Okay, um, so yeah, you have this pop down menu here that has some some default gradients that that you can set and then adjust those as well. Okay, so draw any shape. I'm gonna go ahead and press D on the keyboard just so that it has no fill and stroke. I'm gonna fill it with a color. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So I filled it with a color, but now I'm realizing that that's not. Um, I'm not going to work because once you fill it with a color and you click on the gradient, it applies it to whatever gradient you have up here. Okay. Okay. So you're going to create your own linear gradient using five color, five colors, any colors. Um, so because I chose this one, um, this particular stop down here is going to be 0% opacity. So I'm going to change that back up to 100. So it's filled with um, black, completely filled with black. All right, so I'm going to double click on this first stop here. And I'm going to select a color. I'm going to double click on this one here. and select a different color. And then I'm gonna add in three more stops on this gradient ramp here. Two, three. So one, two, three, four, and then five. So I'm gonna double click on this next one here. Double click on this one and pick a color. Double click on this one and then double click on this one. Change that to a different color. Purple. Okay. All right. So I have my five different colors and these stops here at the bottom, you can position them wherever you want. Uh, because there's five colors in there, I could come to this one and put zero. This one I could put 20. I can put uh, 40 on that one. I can put 60, oops, I didn't want to double click on that. I could put 60 on that one. And then I can put maybe 80 on this one. Okay. And all that's doing is it's pushing that, that stop uh, in a different percentage or different position on that particular ramp. And these up here at the top will, you can line them up with those stops underneath. And that just gives you, um, it 
changes the um, width of and for, with this particular one changes the width of the of the of the stripes, but it also widens how much of that color that you're that's going to be visible in each of those those stops. Okay, so if I didn't want the green to be so so much, I can drag that over there. Same thing with the purple. If I don't want that to be so so much of it, I can drag that over and it's going to shrink the size of that particular color. And you can see as I move these stops, that little diamond moves with it. Um, or you can adjust just the diamond separately, but it won't move past where that stop is. Okay, so you can see I'm trying to move it past there. Um, it won't move past there because it's it's going from one stop to the next. Okay, so you can just, you know, experiment with these you get as much of one color or of you know what whatever color you want to be more prominent you can you know drag these diamonds or drag these um, stops to adjust how much of each color you have there okay and i didn't want to do that i wanted to create another one Okay, so that's how you create stripes and add multiple um, stops to your to your gradient slider, uh, your gradient. Okay, so the last one here is we're going to be creating something with the gradient mesh. So I'm going to draw a shape. And again, it's picking up that same color, same gradient that I just drew or created. Um, so I'm going to press D on the keyboard. So it's filled with uh, just white and a black stroke. Then I'm going to fill it with a color. So, um, you know, whatever color you want to use, I'm going to use uh, purple. Okay. Then I'm going to go to the object menu, create gradient mesh, so right here. <clears throat> the gradient mesh is going to be three rows, three columns. So you can see the preview down here. There's a preview button. If you don't have that checked on yours, go ahead and check it. And then you can see down here in the bottom what it uh, looks like. So we have three rows and three columns. The appearance is going to be flat, but you have other options here to the center or to the edge. And then you have a highlight percentage here. So if I put 50% in there, um, that the white that was on the edge is less. If I do to the center, again, you can see how it changes. And then if I just do flat, um, there's no color. You can at the when, it, when you change, leave it at flat, the appearance at flat, you can go in and manipulate these individual anchor points to put in whatever color you want. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit on this one here so that you can see those, those anchor points. I'm going to take my direct selection tool and I'm going to click on one of those anchor points. And it's the same anchor points that you get when you're drawing something with the pen tool. And I'm going to come over here to my fill. And I'm just going to add different colors so you can see. what happens when you add colors to it. Let's do gray. Okay. So it doesn't really look like an egg. It, 
it's just, I just filled these colors in so that you could see what it looks like. But I can go here and do that color, come over here and do that color. And then over here, do maybe white. And deselect it. Okay. So you can go in and fine tune each of those colors. So instead of using the strokes, I can go into the color mixer and I can fine tune those colors a little bit more. So it creates more of a blend from one color to the next. And then this one. Okay, so it looks like it has a highlight. I can come back over to this one. Maybe adjust that a little bit. Okay, and you can also come on these ones on the edge. And adjust those colors as well. So that's that's uh, how you work with the gradient mesh. You can also, let me go back over here. Um, you can also reposition these lines. You can see as I'm doing that, it's pushing that, those colors around. Um, you can also position the direction handles just like you can with the, when you were drawing with the pen tool. So you can fine tune this a little bit more, depending on what you're drawing. Okay. And you can see as I get closer to that edge, how it kind of looks kind of weird. So just depending on what you're drawing, um, here in Illustrator, you know, if you want to do sh more shading, that kind of thing. You can do that. And then there's also a gradient mesh tool right here that if you want to add more points to the mesh, you can. So you can kind of, you know, get a little bit more fine detail with some of the, the colors. Okay. Um, one thing I do recommend if you end up using the gradient mesh for something, and if you've drawn something, um, a shape or, or something, I recommend making a copy of it and keeping it off to the side on the pasteboard because you can see as you get with these gradient mesh um, anchor points, you can go in and delete them but your original um, shape that you drew um, ends up having some more anchor points. So it's your, your um, original drawing might not look the same if you try to delete your anchor point, uh, your brush, mesh points, I should say. Okay, so I usually, usually if I'm drawing something with gradient mesh, I'll put it off, uh, create a copy of it, work on, on a copy of it, kind of fine tune those um, gradient mesh points. 
Okay, so then when you're done with this one, uh, you're going to do file, save as, and you're gonna do your last name, first name, and then gradient worksheet, and you're gonna save that. Um, and I'm not gonna replace it because I did the sample one that I did earlier. So you're gonna save that. And then you're gonna come back over to Canvas and you're gonna submit it to this assignment page. Okay, so if you have any questions about any, either the quiz or the gradient tool uh, worksheet, uh, just email me and let me know and I'll um, help you work through it uh, as much as I can through email. If and I need to, I can um, set up a Zoom meeting with you to go over it again uh, if you need to, okay? So, uh, don't hesitate to email me or contact me through Canvas and I will uh, get back to you as soon as possible, okay? And I'll check in again with everybody on Wednesday, um, do a announcement or follow-up email on Wednesday to see how everybody's doing, okay? So have a good rest of your weekend and I will talk to you guys soon.